Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today I'm doing my redone series. In this set of videos, I redid all my testing methodology for noise testing on all of the computer fans that I've tested thus far to make my testing overall more accurate. So I'm going to have a new versus old in the following graphs, and then I'm going to get into uh, all the specific data for all the fans to really get dive deep into how everything's changed so that if you're new to this channel, you can actually see the whole testing process as opposed to just new versus old data. All right, let's get right into the graphs. So before I get into the graphs and actually explain these charts, I want to talk a little bit about what has changed. So through my original testing methodology, when I would do noise testing, I'd have my microphone placed almost right up against the fan and I was finding that I was getting extra wind effects and uh, fan blade effects as it would rush by the fan. So in one way, it's accurate in terms of if the fan blade was running close to like a um, mesh filter or something like that, the extra noise you'd pick up that way. But in overall, most case type situations, I think it was a little bit on the inaccurate side, which is why I decided to revamp and revisit all of my entire testing methodology. And to do that, I now have a fixed distance that the microphone is placed from the, the fan itself and it's a pole basically and I know that exact distance and it's consistent every single time 100% consistent every single time and I put my microphone inside a little yeah, foam container basically I want to build a better one uh, but I need help from viewers like you to join me on Patreon as well as I want to get a better microphone as opposed to one that I'm recording my voice on right now uh, and a better uh, anemometer for reading lower air speeds. But all of that is a little outside my price range right now with the anemometer being like $500. Um, so if you're willing to help me out on Patreon, I'd really appreciate it if you like my videos and the data I'm collecting. Otherwise, we'll con continue with what I can do. But I feel like this improvement is very valid and it handles a wide array, array of situations that we're going to see an actual case tests and uh, this is the way we're going to be doing going forward and now let's get right into actually what we're seeing on this uh, graph right now all right so the first set of uh, graphs we see here so on all of these the original test methodology is going to be on the right side and the new test methodology is going to be on the left side and we're going to have the model of the fan the rank it was positioned so before versus after the model name the rpm there may be a noise depending on what kind of test it is as well as what kind of test it was. So this first one is cooler testing noise normalized, where noise is kind of the key feature for how much airflow we're getting. So for the Tough Fan 14, it originally ranked 11th, and now it's ranked 9th. Originally it was moving 0.8 meters per second of airflow, now it's moving one. So this is one of the few cases where the fan actually gained performance, relatively speaking, when I changed from the original testing methodology to the new testing methodology. So that is a actually very good result for this fan and very impressed actually by that result overall. So let's move on to the next one. 100% nothing has changed because that is not the key factor. Noise is not the key factor. Our key factor here is just the 100% PWM fan signal but you will see a change in the noise value. And that is again, primarily because the way I've te I'm testing the noise is different as opposed to really close to the fan versus farther away from the, from the fan itself. So that noise value is different. I did forget to mention, my noise normalized value has changed from like 40 decibels uh, with the original test methodology. Again, closer to the fan, more noise, so it's artificially loud, versus farther away, which is more realistic noise value and it's 12 decibels and both those are related are related to the a12x25 running around 1100 to 1200 rpm so uh, again back to the one with 100% PWM fan signaling for the cooler test it was ranked fourth overall now onto CFM testing noise normalized it was originally ranked 10th and you can see it's rpm and uh, air velocity, CFM value, and it's now ranked fourth with those values respectively. In terms of uh, at 100% PWM fan signaling, it, was, uh, it is ranked third overall. Now, and then in case airflow testing, how does it rank? Well, in case testing at the six inch noise normalized mark, it was originally ranked 11th, 
moving 1.5 meters per second of airflow. It is now ranked third, moving 1.8 meters per second of airflow. So it's jumped up position a lot, meaning the top fan 14 might be an excellent pick. Um, in terms of its 11 inch noise normalized value, again, we're gonna go into the specifics of each graph or the different types of uh, analyses that I did in a little bit. This is just kind of a broad overview for the original versus new test methodology. We have uh, the 11 inch mark noise normalized. It was originally ranked ninth. It's now ranked fifth and it's moving more air for that relative noise value uh, comparison. Now onto value. Originally for six inch uh, noise normalized airspeed, it was had a value of rank of 13th. It's now moved up to seventh. For the 11 inch mark, noise normalized, it was originally ranked 12th. It's now ranked 10th. So that is a little bit of improvement. And for the cooler testing, noise normalized, it was originally ranked 12th. It's now ranked 10th. And at 100%, it's ranked 6th overall. At For CFM, noise normalized, it was originally ranked 11th. It's now ranked 8th. And for CFM at 100%, it is ranked 6th overall. All right, let's move on to the next section where we go into the specifics of what each graph was and the basically the data. So let's get right into it. Tough Fan 14. So first up is my case simulation task. In the case simulation task, it's looked at in two primary ways. The first way is what kind of case are you actually buying or how are you going to be using these fans inside your case? So the first, so there it was measurements at four key locations, six inches, nine inches, 11 inches, and 14.5 inches. Six inches is representative of a short throw distance. So something like the fractal design torrents, um, fans that sit at the bottom of the case that blow directly into the GPU would be a great situation for the six inch mark. The other situation for the six inch mark is in small form factor cases that are on the larger side that have a front to back airflow type situation. Uh, small form factor cases that rely on airflow to be directly pushed into components, so side up, bottom up, something like that. It's not quite as applicable. You're going to want to use the data from CFM testing as well as in my heatsink because in those types of actual physical cases, pressure optimization is a bit more important than airflow. The nine inch mark is indicative of a uh, compact tower. So again, front to back airflow. And that nine inch mark is from the front, the front fan blowing to where your CPU fan is located. That is that airflow distance. That is the peak value that you care about because you want the air to be at as high as speed when it hits the CPU fan so it doesn't have a chance to slow down. It just helps the air flow through the case very smoothly and as linearly as possible. The 11 inch mark is representative of a mid tower case. So if you just think of a standard mid tower case, a couple examples would be the Corsair 550D, the Meshify 2C, Meshify C, uh, their naming I don't quite remember, but pretty much any other mid tower case. And the 14.5 inch mark is indicative of a large tower, something like the fractal design torrent, if you had the fans in the front position, would be that 14.5 inch mark. Uh, what this doesn't cover is side airflow. Um, you would still want good fans for that, but because the fans actually have to blow air and it takes that hard right angle turn, um, true airflow doesn't matter. And most of those cases are actually designed for AOs and heat sinks where just having air circulating around inside of it is better. This type of testing is actually most important for airflow, airflow related cases. So getting the, to a air cooler. Now, the other way to look at this data is how good is this fan at actually blowing air? So this is what I was talking about before with talking about an airflow case versus a non-airflow case or a uh, air cooler versus non-air cooler. So for air cooler, to get the air to the cooler, you want it to blow the air as 
good as possible. So meaning as high in airflow when it hits the fan as possible. So the best fan that could ever be imagined would have the exit velocity of the air be a perfectly straight line front to back to wherever your CPU tower was. That would be the most ideal fan. So just kind of a graphical example here real quick. So we don't live in that ideal world. There's going to be some amount of spread, but you want the spread to be as little as possible. You don't want this really wide spread. And a lot of static pressure fans actually do a wide spread, while airflow fans tend to be more concentrated. However, nowadays that's a little bit less true because they're able to do better things with blade design and uh, frame design than, um, well, like the 90s and 2000s. Research has gone a long way, but this iterates my point. So air is gonna spread out naturally over time. That's what these graphs indicate. This is actually for a um, ceiling fan, but it proves my point where you're gonna have a concentrated airflow area and then residual airflow around it. And that's kind of what the case simulation does. There's a box around everything and it gives room for the air to spread out. So as it spreads out, it slows down and you want that slowdown to be as little as possible. So that's where you get into how concentrated is the airflow. So we want the airflow to be as lost, to be as linear as possible or bar that kind of a more or less flat line with a curve shape downward. I'm drawing it with the, the mouse cursor as opposed to something that just drops off steeply at the beginning and then levels out flat because there's no airspeed left. It's really hard for me to get accurate measurements at anything less than 0.5 meters per second which is why I'd like to acquire better testing equipment. Now, uh, in this graph, we're seeing 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 percent RPMs, but that doesn't tell us much information other than, hey, this is the values. How does it compare against my control? My control fan is this teal colored line, and it is based off of three parts, the A12X25, and to one part of the A14. The A12X25 tends to beat a lot of other fans at the nine, six, nine, and still be ranked really well at the 11 inch mark, while the larger 140 millimeter size uh, A14 tends to really shine at the 11 inch and 14.5 inch mark. So I blended those two fans together to create my control fan so that I can have a good fan to compare other fans against. So fans that are higher than it, so just over the line, are better, fans, fans that are under it are worse, and here we are in noise normalized values. On my key over here, we have the, tef, the fan model and the RPM mode spinning at. So the tough fan 14 is very close in performance to my control fan, which indicates a very good result overall. Now, cranking things up to 100% PWM fan signaling, and the tough fan 14 really shows its stuff. It's completely blowing away my control fan, uh, despite them would effectively have very similar RPMs. But how does it compare against kind of everything else? Well, that's where this graph comes in. I've compared it against a bunch of other fans that I feel uh, represent good uh, middle of the road as well as poor performing fans. So I've actually tested more fans than this and I just unselected ones that I felt were kind of repeat data. So right here at the top for noise normalized results, we have the Silentlinks 4 Pro 140. And towards the bottom here, this one we have the Arctic P14, and this one that starts off really well and drops away rapidly is the Storm T3 with the purple line being the Corsair AF140 Elite, giving a bunch of different kind of results showing off how different fans can perform. Well, how about the Tough Fan 14? It is sitting right here in this, I'm gonna call it tan colored line. So you can see that it actually starts off really quite towards the top of the graphs, or top of the fence, but it has a little bit faster um, loss in air velocity than some of the other better performing fans, like the uh, Noctua NF-A15 tends to do better as time goes on, so it's actually more efficient at 14.5 inch mark compared to a lot of other fans, but it doesn't do quite as well at that short throw distance. Uh, this light purple line is the A14, so it's doing quite well, but it's also underperforming against the Tough N14 early on, and then it catches it at about the 11 inch mark. 
So this is where I get into, it depends on what size case, like your computer case is, where you care about what kind of performance it is. Because you can just say, well, look at right here, the six inch mark, this fan is better. But if you're putting it into a large tower, you actually should be looking over here at the end of the graph. So pay attention to what size case you actually plan on getting to determine which fan will perform the best for your computer. Now at 100% PWM fan signaling, some things shake up a little bit. The Tough Fan 14 is ranked third overall here. The Silence 4 Pro 140 is basically functionally tied with it, despite the Silence 4 Pro spinning at a much higher RPM. And in the key over here, I have the fan model, uh, the complete model name, more or less, um, the RPM that was spinning at, as well as the noise value that it was generating. Because you might care about how noisy the fan is when it's running at this maximum RPM with related to that airflow. So this way you've got a more complete picture. So the Tough Fan 14, for example, is spinning at about 2000 RPM, generating 33 decibels of noise. Um, my accuracy and noise value with my current testing methodology, the new one, is plus or minus two decibels. So that is a four decibel range. The old one was plus or minus four decibels. So that's an eight decibel range. So that is a big improvement uh, with the two testing methodologies. My accuracy with an airspeed for my current anemometer is plus or minus 0.1 meters per second. So that is a 0.2 meters per second uh, range on it. And I try to cancel that out as much as possible by doing uh, repeat measurements and averaging it out. So then looking closely at the data, you can see that the Tough N14 is generating 33 decibels. Its nearest comparison is against the Silent Links 4 Pro 140, and it's generating 31 decibels. So you can see the trade-offs. They're very, fairly similar in terms of their noise value. And then if you jump up to the very top of the graphs, we have the NFA14 IPC 3000 RPM fan generating 40 decibels. As a reminder, every 10 decibel jump in in um, decibel reading, you're doubling the noise value. So 10 decibels to 20 decibels is double the noise. So I just want to make that perfectly clear. So this graph actually, well, this doesn't actually have decibels on it. But I just want to make sure you're clear on that so that like if you're comparing the NFA 15, which is at 18 decibels to do, do, do what's about double that or 10 decibels over that. So that would be 28. So just about 30, we can round up. So the Silent Wings 4 Pro is double the noise of the NFA 15, just comparison's sake. And well, how does it actually do in that noise or airspeed versus decibel that I was just talking about. So again, here's 10 decibels jumping up to 20. That is double the noise. So how does the Tough Fan 14 do? It has a pretty steady increase in airspeed. It's not, doesn't have the same sort of quite dramatic jumps that you see in other fans. So these little joggles that you see on some of the other fans, those are where I hit a harmonic frequency in the fan or the fan acting with my testing apparatus, or uh, the fan in my testing apparatus just all vibrating together. It's just really hard for me to know, which is why I'd like to actually upgrade that testing apparatus to something more solid. Right now it's basically plexiglass and cardboard, or not even, yeah, cardboard. So uh, it's hard to know exactly right there. But the Tough Fan 14 is pretty much square in the middle of the pack, except for at the higher RPM range. It's kind of dropped back from the top end. But overall, I'd say it's doing pretty darn well. And oh, I forgot to mention, I have the NFA 12X25 listed in here, and it's just in there as a good representation for a good 120 millimeter class fan. Okay. So moving on to how it performs in a CPU air cooler. And my cooler is the Noctua U12A. It is a 120 millimeter class uh, heatsink. However, I do slap the 140 millimeter fans to it just to get kind of a, a reading on it. Now this isn't thermal temperature. We're, we're not looking at that. We're looking at airspeed traveling through it. Um, doing thermal testing and doing this testing are both two completely valid ways of testing things. Um, 
their advantage and disadvantage is to doing it each way. Uh, if there's enough interest, I could actually do a talking piece as to the advantages and disadvantages of doing the testing methodology in each way. But for right now, we're just looking at airspeed. So the graph on the left side is RPM horizontal versus airspeed vertical. The right graph is airspeed vertical versus noise horizontal. So going back to the left graph, that is a pure blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this fan at moving air at a given RPM. So you actually want the fan to move as much air as possible at as little RPM as possible because in general that means the fan is going to be quieter. But it's basically a blade efficiency test. On the right graph, it's a efficiency of how quiet it is for a given amount of airflow it can produce. So again, you want that to you want that to be as high as possible. You want it to be moving as much air as possible. So sitting uh, top left as opposed to bottom right, you want it to move as much air as possible for as little noise as possible. Um, so both of them, the better fans are going to be sitting top left. Now let's take a closer look at what we're actually seeing. The Tough Fan 14 ties my control fan at lower RPMs, but then breaks away as the RPM goes up. So it is really good at moving air, indicating that it would be great in terms of its blade performance in your, uh, well, as a heatsink radiator uh, AIO fan, and as well as in small form factor towers, if it, if it can fit, um, for pushing air through and around all the cramped components in that tiny little case. Now, how does it do in noise value? Well, against my control fan, it is underperforming. It is a little bit, quite a bit noisier for that same airspeed. So you do sacrifice a bit of noise for that performance. But how does it compare against every other fan? Well, I want to talk about a few things on here before we get into the positioning. Over here on the right side with my kind of my key legend is are these numbers. 250, 240, W equals 2.46, 3, 2, a bunch of other numbers. This is a wattage to air speed for my specific cooler, the U12A, on my specific CPU, the Intel i7-11700K. And I did a whole testing piece on what the maximum uh, performance was, how much wattage my CPU could draw for a given amount of air speed traveling through my cooler, where I set the CPU to thermal max. So it's just locked at a 91 degrees C. And extra cooling that was going through it just meant that I could get more wattage, so more clock speed. And I just recorded down my um, steady state wattages. These are not spikes, these are averages. Um, so you can sort of indicate what kind of extra performance you'll get. But this is only for my CPU cooler and my CPU. So how can I use this data? Well, you can use it as a relative starting point. So if let's say your cooler came with a Lightwings 140 high speed. Well, in my noise normalized results at 12 decibels, you'd be pushing 0.6 meters per second of airflow. Well, let's say you didn't find that performance very very good, you wanted more performance, or you wanted your CPU to run cooler because you have a locked CPU, or you're using underclocked, or something like that. Well, you could take a look at one of these better fans. Let's say, well, the NFA14 IPC3000, for example. It's, run, it's pushing 1.1 meters per second of airflow. That is almost double the amount of airspeed. Now, how much wattage improvement are you going to get? How much actual air cooling performance difference are you going to get? That's a little bit harder to say because there's too much variation in it. Um, between coolers and radiators and everything like that, there's no fixed number of how much extra cooling you're going to get for that. It's going to be um, basically device-to-device -device case. So for my specific one, I can tell you how much performance I'd get or estimated I'd get. For yours, it's harder to say, but you would get more performance. Uh, the other, or at lower temperatures, but there's another way you can deal with this. If let's say you think my noise normalized value is too noisy for you, 
you you run it at the set that I actually did, and you're like, well, computer tech and more Bill. My name is Bill. I think that that value was too noisy. Well, you can take that value and turn the RPM down, turn the power PWM signal down, and now your fan is going to run quieter for that same performance value. So that's how you can use extrapolate this data for your own for your own cooler, for your own fan, for your own CPU, for your own case. So how does the Tough Fan 14 rank up against the other fans? Well, it's middle of the road. So you can see that there's a bunch of fans that are technically ranked at one meters per second air, air, airflow, but the lines are a little bit bigger on some of them. Again, they are functionally equivalent, but in reality, their positioning is where they're positioned because I did the test several passes and then averaged the results. And this is the positioning of the fans, even though you could consider them functionally equivalent because of the accuracy of my instrumentation. But I'm able to basically get better positioning data by doing the results, testing it several passes. And you can see how other fans place on there. All right, how does it look at 100% PWM fan signaling? Well, it's doing really well. It's towards the top of the graphs. You have the fan name, the RPM it was running at, and the noise value. So compared to other fans spinning at relatively similar RPMs, it is a bit noisier than them. So like the Light Wings High Speed 140 is spinning a little bit faster than the Tough Fan 14, but it's quieter but it's also not moving as much airflow. So if this is where a case where what is most important to you matters. Do you care about more performance or do you perf care about more quiet? And I can't make that decision for you, that is up to you. I can only present the data and uh, try to get enough information to, to help you decide. But the Tough Fan 14 is looking pretty darn good. Now, Airspeed versus decibels. Uh, decibels is again the uh, bottom or horizontal and airspeed is vertical. And we have a small selection of fans that I feel are pretty good representations as well as we have the NFA12X25 listed in here. And the A12X25 is right here, this blue line. So you know, it's obvious that it is a top performing fan. We have the T30 in here as well. And it's this blue line. And the Tough Fan 14 is this blue line. So the Tough Fan 14 is a little bit on the noisy side compared to some other top end fans, but it's overall not a bad result. And we kind of see that from the other graph where we actually had the noise values at the top end. And it creates a nice, almost linear progression, which might actually be more appealing so that you have a nice smooth transition in noise value as the fan ramps up in speed, as opposed to one that might hit a harmonic frequency, get noisy and then get quieter again, or have like quick um, like jabs, like a lot more airspeed or not quite as much airspeed while increasing noise and then the like airspeed catches up to it or something like that. So having smooth transitions is more pleasant on the ear. All right, next we have uh, CFM testing. So I'm gonna go leave this graph for a second and go to a picture. So I don't really like CFM testing overall. And the reason for that is it's basically this diagram, except I couldn't find a really good one. I should take a picture of my testing apparatus, but you have a fan and you have it against a tube. And this looks like a square box, but whatever. You put it against a tube that is the same size as your fan. Uh, that's the way I'm doing it at least. And so as you blow air down the tube, there is no room for the air to spread out sideways like there is in this one. So just imagine that this fan is bigger or this box is small or this tube is smaller. So all the air is going to travel in this direction down the pipe. So fans that have a tendency to shoot air off to the sides, like in the earlier graph we saw, or image we saw, with that pressure fan that tend to spew air off, off the sides versus the one that was an airflow fan tended to concentrate it. 
um, putting it into this tube tends to hide the fact that a fan is shooting air off to the sides. They're going to look much closer in performance than they actually are. Now, on average, one that has a concentrated airflow should out have a tendency to outperform the one that's shooting air off to the sides because there's more momentum. There's more of that force of the air traveling down the tube than one that has a little bit of the air going, more of the air going sideways before it goes down the tube. But it's going to hide those results. They're going to look much closer in performance value than they actually are, which is why I don't really like CFM testing. A lot of reviewers do CFM testing in the, in the way I've just described, and they clearly just don't understand how fans work and why this is an invalid test for performance in a case. Now, the use case where CFM testing is valid is in radiators, how the fan is blowing air through the radiator, in a heat sink, or um, actually as the outtake, the fan that's sitting at the back of the case. So there you can actually measure CFM of how much air is flowing out of the case. And those use cases are valid uses for CFM data. But everything else for how good is this fan as case airflow, blowing air through your case, no. Anybody who's telling you otherwise, they're fundamentally incorrect. I actually have a degree in aerospace engineering and I specialized in fluids. So this is a topic I know a little bit about. And this is just an image showing how uh, air kind of spreads out over time. It's actually for a ceiling fan. I mentioned this earlier. It's the same picture as before. Okay, back to this graph. So now that I finished ranting and raving, uh, better fans are going to be sitting in the top left once again. We have CFM versus RPM and CFM versus uh, decibels. And CFM is simply calculated by you know the airspeed going through your tube. You have your anemometer sitting at the back of it and you can measure the airspeed that crosses it. And you know the surface area of the circle or you can even have your uh, CFM testing apparatus be a square or whatever shape you know want it to be. But circle is overall generally recommended because the fan is a circle. And you know the surface area of that tube. So if you're to take a slice of it you have a circle. You can measure the surface area of that circle. So that's uh, feet squared times feet per minute. So feet times feet squared gives you feet cubed. So cubic feet per minute. Sorry, I am an engineer. Math is my thing, or one of my things. So I'm just trying to be funny about it. Uh, I can do a whole piece on CFM testing if you would like. Leave comments down below if it's something you'd be interested in seeing. But anyways, how does the Tough Fan 14 actually do? Well, it lines up very closely with my control fan, so that's a great result right there. Now, how does it do in noise value? Well, the Tough Fan 14 somehow is doing a little bit better than it at low RPMs, but as we reach the top end, it actually becomes noisier for the same performance value than my control fan. But... How does it rank against every other fan? Well, in noise normalized results, the Tough Fan 14 is ranked fourth overall. So that is a excellent result. Again, reiterating the point that this fan might be a good pick for radiators and heat sinks. And uh, it kind of depends on the type of pressure application. I would like to acquire a good thick radiator to do more radiator type testing. Um, but once again, I need help from Patreon, Patreon support to acquire even more testing equipment. The purchasing these computer case fans has been a major endeavor of mine. Um, anyways, you can see how other fans place in it. So let's move on to 100% PWM fan signaling and the Tough Fan 14 is ranked third overall. And you do see the RPM and noise value is generating while in this test. All right, so how does its line graph look? for uh, CFM versus decibels. And the Tough Fan 14 is actually kind of sitting in the middle of the road in terms of uh, how it actually performs. Again, fans that have these joggles are just where I hit a harmonic frequency and there's not much I can do about that. Uh, so it is never at the top, but it's never in a bad position. So the Tough Fan 14 is looking pretty good. Uh, let's move on to the next section. Uh, all right, the last section here 
is value proposition. The Tough Fan 14 is a $30 fan. So uh, value proposition is literally just airspeed or CFM divided by dollars. So it's how much air is it moving for a given dollar. If you're on an ultra, ultra tight budget where every penny in your build matters, you're gonna wanna pay special attention to this value proposition. This is probably your most important section because you want the absolute best bang for your buck. You want your stretch your dollar the farthest you can. If you've got a little bit of extra wiggle room, you want some RGB, you want a little bit of extra airflow, or maybe you want it to be a little bit quieter, this is where you'd use the value proposition with the other graphs and determine where you want the fan to sit, where on the, that cost curve you want the fan to sit. Do you want it to be on the higher end, the lower end, the bottom, wherever? And that's where you get to decide of where, where you want to spend your money. And if you've got unlimited budget, well, buy whichever fan you want. Um, I can't decide for you. You've got unlimited money. So get whichever performance you like. Get whatever style you like. Okay, so now that I finished saying my explanation there, uh, the, uh, on all these graphs, the noise normalized results are going to be on the left side. On percent PWM fan signaling is going to be on the right side. Let's dive into it. The Tough Fan 14 for the 140 millimeter class fans. Uh, and one more side note, sorry, I just got a tangent in my brain. In everything but CFM testing, 120s and 140s can be directly related because they're using the same testing apparatus. Apparatuses, apparati, whatever the right word is. And the CFM testing, they cannot be directly compared even though I put them in uh, one overall graph comparison because they use a different testing apparatus, a different size tube. Um, future testing, I hope to be able to have one 3D printed for me, meaning I'd buy it from a 3D printer person where it would start off at like 160, 180 millimeter wide nozzle and then it'd focus down to 120 millimeter size. I think that would be a pretty good way to be able to have a, a wide variety of tests in one testing apparatus. But anyways, that is off the point of what we're talking about right here. The Tough Fan 14 is basically sitting middle of the road for noise normalized results and actually a kind of slightly above the middle of the road at the 6 inch mark for 100%. So it's not a bad result for it, but it is completely blown away by the top value fans in the 120 millimeter class category. Now, at the 11 inch mark, this is where fans that... Um, kind of the middle ground between fans that, so the 11 inch mark is past that point where fans that shoot air off to the sides start doing really badly. So it, this is where it basically separates the airflow fans from the fans that shoot air off in every direction, what was classically called static pressure fans. But in my personal opinion, I think that you pretty much hands down always want to get a fan that has a good concentrated airflow, um, but you want to pay attention to how the fan actually performs in the specific test that you care about. So if it's on a heat sink, heat sink test specifically. But I think every fan should be designed in such a way that it can blast air in a tight, focused airflow as opposed to just spewing it off to the sides. And the Tough Fan 14 pretty much sits uh, at this 11 inch mark, uh, upper, about the middle of the pack, but it's so far off from the top performers in the value category, even at 100%. It's just not that great of value overall. Now for the heatsink testing, noise normalized and 100%. On noise normalized, it's kind of middle-ish, except for when you take a look at the 120s. And at 100%, the story is more or less the same. It's overall not bad, but it's just not top of that value proposition. Now at CFM, CFM is where it tends to has do a little bit better compared to other fans, as we saw from the other from the earlier actual performance graphs. And it kind of shows it's a bit above the average, but it's just a far cry from the actual top performance in the category, even at 100% PWM fan signaling. So that's basically the end. Where does that leave us with this fan? Well, before I get into my wrap-up section, 
I think that leaves us with it's a it's a very good fan. There is an RGB version pictured there. Um, it comes in three packs. It comes as singles. At least I think I saw it as singles. So it's not a bad choice for a computer fan. It looks pretty pretty good, but it's never the best in any category. Um, it's value. It's a little on the expensive side compared to other fans with similar performance characteristics. So I would say it would be a good pick if you're looking for the aesthetic. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll let you have to let you decide whether you think this is a great pick for your build or not. Um, for me personally, I would probably only use it as the fans in the bottom of my case to blow air up at my GPU, but not much beyond that for me personally. Um, so yeah, take that for what you will. Let's uh, jump to my round wrapping up section. All right, at the end of every video, I always like to show off my raw data. Here it is for the Tough Fan 14. Um, if you want to use this data in for your own personal use, so you make your own Excel charts, graphs, whatever, record it down for your own purposes, you are more than welcome to do so. However, if you want to use it in any sort of publication, written, journal, research paper, whatever, I ask that you reference me and my channel. I'm the one who generated this data and it belongs to me. Um, even though I've given you permission to use it for your own private purposes, it is my data. It uh, takes me about an hour and a half to two hours per fan to test. And then it takes, uh, well, hours of extra work to update my graphs, charts, and everything else. To, And then it takes extra time to uh, update my presentation and have that narrowed view of focus of the data that we actually care about so that everything doesn't look congested and then of course it takes time to record and uh, do the presentation. It is a labor of love of mine. I fundamentally am interested in airflow and aerodynamics. I don't always get to do it on a daily basis with my job so it's a different side tangent and no one else seemed to be doing a good job with fan testing. My only issue is my testing equipment, which I hope to uh, improve someday. And uh, I really appreciate it if you do consider joining me on Patreon. Um, or please subscribe to this channel. That is another great way to help me. Um, anyways, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.